good evening. Casual clothes are beloved by many. They are worn by many. They have a prominent place in our world. Once upon a time, there really wasn't casual clothes. People wore two suits a week for leisure and also for formal occasions. But these days, we have separate clothing for casual time. People like casual clothes because it tends to be comfortable. Casual clothes are often made out of cotton. Cotton is very soft. It does shrink, but it is nice to the skin. Remember the jingle of the cotton industry? The touch and feel of cotton, the fabric of our lives. Some manufacturers these days create synthetic cotton blends. That way you get the softness of cotton along with some of the benefits of synthetic fabrics. People generally think jeans are really comfortable. I've never understood this. Jeans are the epitome casual clothes, but I don't find them comfortable. In fact, I find slacks, which are supposed to be formal items, more comfortable. People say if you break in jeans, they become ever so comfortable. I haven't realized that. I don't have a pair of blue jeans in my wardrobe. Some informal clothing is actually less comfortable than more formal clothing. Some people wear really super tight jeans in order to show off certain features of their bodies. Other times people wear items such as dog collars, which certainly cause tightness around the neck. Sometimes people wear unseasonably warm or unseasonably cold clothing because they like the style. It's informal, but it's not comfortable. Generally, casual clothes are comfortable. Casual clothes are versatile. You can use them for a number of purposes. You can have casual clothes to lounge around the house. You can sleep in casual clothes. Some people like pajamas. I find pajamas to be a bit pretentious and unnecessary when t-shirts, shorts, sweatshirts, and sweatpants can serve additional purposes. A t-shirt and shorts can serve many purposes. Pajamas, really only one. You can use casual clothes to do work around the house or anywhere else for that matter. You can mold a lawn in casual clothes. You can change a car's oil in casual clothes. You can hammer with a hammer in casual clothes. You can plant a garden in casual clothes. You can play sports in casual clothes. Some people who don't understand sports don't understand this. I once knew this woman who insisted that I wear nice clothes to play basketball in. She just doesn't get it. You don't want to wear slacks and a dress shirt to play basketball in. You look silly. And certainly, it's not necessary. Some casual sports clothes are spiffy. Some people actually want that. For me, it doesn't matter that much. If I'm going for a run, I don't need to look that nice. 
Some people want to look nice, they insist on looking nice. I do go into grocery stores, so I do hope I at least am not super bad looking, but ultimately I wear what's comfortable for running. You can even wear casual clothes out and about. In the past, I have done that. But these days, if I'm going out, I generally don't wear casual clothes. I don't wear the clothes I wear for running to go to the store or other places. When I was in college, I would wear sweats and a t-shirt to class. Nowadays, I wouldn't think of doing that. It just doesn't feel right to me. On occasion I will, such as last weekend, I was already in my sweats and a t-shirt with my shoes on, so I figured why take everything off and put something on just to go to the store. Other people feel this way as well. Some people have to wear formal clothes all the time. I'm not one of them, but there are those people that exist. Casual clothes are considered ugly, or at least not as good looking as more formal clothes. There is some truth to this. Some people say if you dress up, you feel better about yourself. Some job interview books even recommend dressing up for a phone interview because you feel more confident about yourself. I certainly feel good when I'm dressed well. So that makes me want to dress well. The saying is, clothes make the person. So people will judge you negatively if you're not dressed in the proper way. People may think less of you. Casual clothes can become a vicious cycle. Because they're casual clothes, you may not care about what gets on them. Thus, you get stains on them. Because they have stains on them, you don't care about them even as much as you did before. So they get more stains on them, so on and so forth. If you're wearing really nice clothes, you may be careful about what you eat and how you eat. If you're just wearing some ragged old t-shirt, does it really matter if you spill on it? I don't like having stains on what I'm wearing, whether it's food stains or anything else. Even if it's just a ragged old t-shirt. Some people think you're lazy if you're wearing casual clothes. Indeed, there are lots of lazy people who do wear casual clothes. There's a little truth to this because it's really easy to put on a t-shirt. Any slob can put on a t-shirt. It takes more effort to tie a tie, to straighten out your slacks, to button down a shirt. But there also are a lot of lazy people who wear suits. In the grand scheme, tying a tie is not that ambitious of a task. It takes a little skill, sure, but it's not super ambitious. There are some people who wear casual clothes who exercise tons or are otherwise ambitious. So that alone doesn't determine all that much. A lot of people act as if it does. A lot of slobs do wear casual clothes. So perhaps they're giving casual clothes a bad name. Earlier I talked about the people who have to wear formal clothes everywhere they go. 
these people want to make an impression. You wonder if these people ever go to bed. If they go to bed, what are they going to wear? They can't wear their formal clothes, so they may actually have to wear casual clothes. In October of, in August of 2006, I resigned from the school district of 622. Thus, I needed to apply for jobs. I applied to a great variety of positions. Virtually anything ethical I apply to. I do have a rigorous ethical criteria, but still, there's a lot of positions I apply for. I applied for over 2,000 positions. These were varied. Blue collar, white collar, physical, clerical, well paid, not well paid, temporary, permanent. Close to where I live, further away. I managed to procure about 10 or 12 interviews. Through this, I really got to see the different dress codes. Different places had different expectations, both in the interview and what happened if you actually got the job. It is very important to dress just right. You can actually overdress. The books say it's better to overdress than underdress. There are problems with overdressing in certain positions. So it's a tricky balance. I got interviews at the following positions. A call center supervisor for a survey research place, the Jewish Community Center fitness specialist, a massage therapy place sales position, accounting specialist house cleaning, collections position, marketing manager, a child's photography place, a real estate position, an auto class place, plus a paper print industry place. Some books say if you're dressed as well as the interviewer, it's a good sign. Fortunately, most of the time I dressed about as well as the interviewer did. I dressed better a number of times. I really learned about the different dress codes for the different positions. Certainly, white collar positions have a stricter dress code. In some blue collar positions, you can wear pretty much anything you want. I do like the fact that blue collar positions tend to have less games associated with them. For example, that real estate position demanded great dress, but the person there was playing all these stupid games, asking me stupid questions. In the job interview, while the auto glass place was just very straightforward. You did this, you did that. Would you work these hours? There was no games. Some people even tell you not to dress too well for the interviews. For example, at the house cleaning interview, the one guy said, 
You don't need to come in with a suit and tie. You're not walking to IBM. You're walking into his name, Inc. He said, just dress casual. I wore something nice and presentable, but I didn't wear a suit and tie. For some positions, I did come in with a tie. For that marketing manager position, the guy said something similar. He said, you don't need to come in here with a suit and tie. It's business casual. Thus, I learned about what business casual is contrasted to business formal. Business formal, as I found out, is what we typically think of business wear. Suits and ties for men are the most noticeable symbol of business formal wear. Business casual is a step down from business formal. Business casual involves clothes that are very nice but not as super spiffy as suits and ties. Button down shirts, slacks, dress shoes, nice dresses for women or blouses are examples of business casual. Business casual is something I can do. I have plenty of button down shirts. I have plenty of slacks in my wardrobe. I managed to get a pair of dress shoes after being hired by the collections position. Business formal is more difficult. I can do the tie, which is the most difficult part. I can certainly do the nice shirt and the slacks. The hard part is the suit coat. A lot of these are made out of animal products. It's hard to find some that aren't. Plus, they tend to be expensive. For some reason, you wouldn't think they would have to be. They're just made out of fabric. You can get nice shirts for cheap prices. You can get slacks for cheap prices. You can get ties for cheap prices. So why are the suit coats so expensive? The collections company I got hired with is Opus 21. Opus 21 is a contract company for XL Energy. XL Energy itself has a pretty lenient dress code. People wear jeans all the time. But we are not under that dress code. We have our own business casual dress code. We want to impress, people say. Actually, A fair number of the people who work for Opus 21 are from Apostolic Bible Institute, or ABI as they refer to it. They are going to be ministers and ministers' wives. Because they're going to be ministers, they have suits that they wear all the time. During the school year, they come from Bible College straight to work. So it really doesn't make sense for them to change. They really don't have the time. They need to get going. So even though our dress code is business casual, they are dressing above and beyond that. It's hard to compete with that. I don't even have a suit in my collection, so if I wanted to wear that, that would be tough. Our workplace, like many other workplaces, has something called Casual Fridays. To some people, this is a big deal. I think it's sad that people get so excited about this. 
it represents how stifling corporations are. You get to wear jeans. You get to be wild. You get to let loose, let your hair down, and be a little crazy. If wearing jeans is being crazy, we are in serious trouble. In some fields, blue jeans are accepted wear all the time. Even in education, people wear blue jeans. Educators generally are very anally attentive, but their clothing is not. Professors sometimes wear blue jeans and other casual clothes. But it's a big deal in certain corporate environments if you can wear blue jeans and t-shirts one day out of the week. I wonder if ever in the history of casual Fridays, if somebody ever mixed up Thursday with Friday, maybe the week was really long and it felt like it should be Friday, but it was only Thursday and the person wore casual clothes. <laughs> Heaven forbid that. Heaven forbid that. Actually, a couple of times, people from ABI dressed inappropriately. Sometimes nobody mentions anything. A couple of times I heard our supervisor who is also from ABI scold them. She said, this is your morning. If you come like that again, you're going to have to go home and change. I think instead of having casual Fridays, we should have formal Fridays. It's better alliteration. Formal Friday. That'd be great for poems. Casual Friday just didn't sound the same. One of my co-workers asked what would be the difference of any other day. When you say formal, you could refer to business suits, or you could actually be referring to what we consider formal wear. Tuxedos. Now that would be cool if we had to wear tuxedos on Friday. We'd really dress up. That would be asking a lot given how little we make. When you make $9 an hour, it's hard to pay for your basic needs, much less buy expensive tuxedos. But maybe our company could purchase them and let us wear them at work. We look really good. I've never wore a tuxedo. So I think it's about time. As long as people want something comfortable, versatile, and low maintenance, casual clothes are probably going to stay with us. Good evening.